you were to visualize thoughts in the process of thinking itself, what would they look like? Noted artist Jane Hammond came up with 55 paper objects, including drawings, collages, prints, and sculptures. All of them are created from her alphabet of 276 borrowed images that Hammond compiled more than 15 years ago. I wanted to figure out a way to make art that was as variable and multiple as all of our identities, as the day you're going to have today, as the many conversations that you will have tomorrow, that had some science, some politics, some humor, some feminism, some interest in other cultures and time periods, and somehow figure out a structure where all that could be woven together. Her works reference board games, scrapbooks, maps, charts, books, and costumes. You know, someone once said to me, wow, there's so much information in your work. And I said to her, well, go outside and walk down the street for an hour and tell me how many things you see, you know? I mean, I think with these drawings, when you look at them, your mind is kind of flooded with associations that you have with Gandhi, with this frog, with this fish, etc. And that sort of complex constellation of ideas bouncing around in your brain, it makes you aware of the, of the process and actuality of thinking itself, of what thinking feels like, of what it feels like to be an alive person who is engaged in their brain with some thinking process. That's to me more important than giving the person a thought to think about, you know, to throw them back on the, an awareness of their own relationship to their brain. She's a very important artist, especially uh, in the 1980s. Um, so she very much is a part of what's happening in contemporary art. Uh, Julie Sassi, chief curator of Tucson Museum of Art, where the exhibit is showing. What's, what's important about her work is how she utilizes symbols and how she thinks about the most commonplace objects and images as a way of understanding our own lives. Uh, I find it fascinating that uh, she can find uh, beauty and, and relevance in something as simple as uh, twine over a stick uh, or an image that we might take for granted in everyday uh, activities or in reading in newspapers. She finds significance in it and it helps to bring it back to a, a, a very simplistic source of understanding our world as she was mentioning the idea of looking into your own mind, but she finds um, a complexity at the same time as simplicity in things around us. There's a series of little postcard collages to my left here that I made in Mexico, and I very deliberately made two of them off the same postcard. And it sort of suggests the idea that Yes, you're responding to a found object, but you could respond to the same found object differently on another day or in another way. That there's always multiple realities. Or if you look at this black butterfly map over there, at first glance there are some butterflies that appear to be the same. But if you look at the two butterflies next to each other, you realize they're not the same species. They have ever so slightly different markings. And it's a little way that I sort of reward you for close inspection. Sassy says the exhibit is not as difficult to understand as one may think. It was interesting when the docents were doing their original training and, and getting ready for it. They were in, in great earnest to know what does this symbol mean and what does that symbol mean. And uh, I said, you know, you can actually have fun with this one. You don't have to know the dove means this and the such and such means that. That they can actually enjoy it and have a sense of playfulness all the while a, a certain sense of wry intellect. And, and so I like that. I, I hope people would enjoy it for picking out what symbols they recognize and, and finding their own sense of meaning. For KUAT, I'm Suyan Lee.